Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm going to do a classic rock reaction, man. This is a complimentary quad. A uh, complimentary quad featuring the music of Led Zeppelin. And um, what we have here is, um, I believe, a bunch of um, instrumentals, if I'm not mistaken. Um, well, let me give you a, a lineup of the tunes, man. We're going to start with uh, Heartbreaker, uh, instrumental. When the Levee Breaks, um, rough mix with alternate vocals. Uh, Fool in the Rain, isolated drum track. And finally, Led Zeppelin, untitled jam session. It's an untitled jam session. Okay, man. Yeah, we're into that mode where we're uh, checking out all of those um, outside tracks, all of those tracks that weren't complete. Lost tracks, uh, tracks that are just uh, uh, out there all over the place, that sort of thing. So uh, it seems to all be kind of um, getting uh, funneled in, man. So before um, I get going with this, I just want to give a shout out and a thanks very much to Joe Shield. Joe, thank you, man. Thank you for the recommendation. Also providing the links, I appreciate it. Joe wrote us a note here, man. Um, yeah, it's a whole paragraph. Let's check this out. Joe says, Hi, STB. Here's my recommendation for a complimentary quad. All Led Zeppelin, but nothing you've reacted to in the past, and does not include any of their material, which I know you will be getting to shortly, any of their live material. The Zepp quad consists of instrumental versions of existing tracks, isolated bass and drums for existing tracks, a rough mix with alternate vocals of an existing track, and a short untitled jam session. This is great stuff. I hope you love it as I do. I kept in mind the length when putting these together and tried to keep it down try to keep it down time wise, leaving enough time for you to do reactions and to keep within a reasonable length. I'm hoping my recommendations are not too much in the way of Zeppelin niche geekery. I think your subscribers will enjoy. Thanks, man. I love your channel. I came from the, uh, for the Zeppelin, but I stuck around for other stuff as well. Take care, my man, and stay safe during these crazy times. Joe. All right, Joe. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, let's hit up the first track, man. That is uh, Instrumental of Heartbreaker. So this is off like a huge body, uh, the cutting room floor, and it's only part three. And it's, uh, yeah, it's part of the cutting room floor, and the cutting room floor part three is uh, over an hour long. So there's, uh, I don't know, this is part three, I don't know how many parts there are to it. The cutting room floor. All right. So from the cutting room floor heartbreaker let's get it <laughs>
so that is a uh, heartbreaker. <clears throat> Without the vocals, just instrumentals, man. It's quite a mental exercise that was. You know, uh, you're expecting the vocals to drop and then you, remem you remind yourself it's just instrumental. And then you start to kind of absorb it and enjoy it. And then uh, um, you marvel at how these guys were able to compose their stuff, you know. And uh, I've said a number of times already in the last couple of weeks about Led Zeppelin that if they didn't have um, vocals, they would have still been a very successful rock instrumental band you know just these tracks without vocals release them as just rock instrumentals and they would still have a great fan base you know just because of the mastery of their musicianship the thunder you know the bass groove the guitar solos man there's just too much there for you not to deny uh for you to deny their greatness you know so i uh it's, it's really, really cool actually listening to it like this. I can appreciate uh, listening to it like this. Now, I'm going to say this right off the bat. Anybody, and I mean anybody, who comes at me talking about you are wasting your time listening to uh, instrumentals only, what's the point, all of that sort of stupid shit, don't even bother because I'm going to throw it right back at you. I'm not going to listen. I'm telling you right now, anybody who comes at me like that, I am not going to be listening to you, paying attention. I'm not even going to answer your stupid comment, right? I'm telling you that right now. There's a few of you who have uh, come at me like that in the last little while. And uh, yeah, man, I don't have any time for you. If you don't have an appreciation for uh, the way a song is created the structural skeleton of a song even before the vocals are added then you are a very 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 narrow-minded incomplete uh individual in a sense where music is concerned you know because you gotta appreciate the song from the ground up this isolated listening really gives you an idea of how um well they mastered the song and I, I don't know how Led Zeppelin... Now, did they figure out lyrics first or did they figure out the music first? Uh, answer that for me if you're uh, a Led Zeppelin <coughs> uh, expert. But, um, you know, I know that some bands uh, do the music first before the vocals or vice versa. But I'm just... I can't remember how Led Zeppelin does it. I'm guessing that they probably do the music first. Um, you know, I mean, these three masterful musicians... I bet you that they can just sit there and just, hey, you know, this is what I've come up with. Okay, well, let me add my thunder to it. Okay, well, let me add my keyboards or whatnot and, you know, go from there. Hey, Robert, this is what we got. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me come up with some lyrics. I am betting that that's probably mostly how uh, they did it. Anyway, needless to say, I enjoyed the hell out of that, man. <clears throat> I enjoyed it uh, almost as much as I enjoy the uh, song with vocals. But I, again, it's a great mental exercise and I appreciate um, just the mastery of their musicianship alone, man. It's isolated. And you know, here's that test. If you've never heard of Led Zeppelin, right? And uh, you're at a party. <laughs> like I'm often at a party and I'm listening to these songs. You're at a party. And this track comes on without um, any verbiage, you know, and you're listening to it, you'd be like, yo, what is this shit? This shit is on, holy. And if somebody says to you, this is a group called Led Zeppelin, they don't have vocals, it's just instrumentals. And the instrumentals, all of the tracks are as hot as this. You would say, oh my God, that is cool. That is really, really cool. And uh, you'd want to know more. You'd want to get into it a little bit more. So when you appreciate and isolate what they've done in uh, creating the music, you know, it just kind of expands your horizons a little bit. I'm still talking to some of those people that uh, hit me up about, oh, what are you wasting time with Led Zeppelin instrumentals for and lost tracks for and this and this, and you're just spinning your wheels and... Uh, 
you know, this is getting dull, this is getting boring, man, just get lost, right? That's all I gotta say to you. So, the cutting room floor, um, that's what this is from. And sorry, I'm just uh, doing a click here, and I'm not seeing anything on um, uh, Google search except it's taking me to YouTube. Uh, yeah, okay, the cutting room floor. This is a compilation album of unreleased Led Zeppelin content. The purpose of the project is to bridge the gap between the niche bootleg community and the casual listener. It's experimental in nature and is hardly a professional product, simply a hobby. And this is uh, the host of the uh, uh, channel here that's compiled this uh, cutting room floor. Okay, okay. Um, Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't read my note before I uh, started this. Um, uh, Joe said, possibly the sickest guitar riff and filthiest bass line ever recorded. For me, anyway. Maybe you'll agree with the assessment. It's definitely not far off, man. Um, yes, so I think what I'll do with this quad is I'm going to spare you guys the uh, reading element, especially of the songs that we already know and that we've already covered like Heartbreaker, you know, I've already done a read. Um, when the Levy Breaks, that's our next one. I've done a read for that and Fool in the Rain. Uh, only one that I'm not familiar with would be this fourth one being the Untitled Jam. I guess that's just what it's called. All right. So, man, um, let's check out When the Levy Breaks. And uh, it's a rough mix with alternate vocals. Recorded in May the 19th, 1971, also from the cutting room floor. And uh, Joe says here, in many ways, I believe this version to be superior to the one on the fourth album. Wow, okay. Let's check that out, man. <laughs> Joe, you got me all hyped up now. All right. Uh, when the levy breaks. The cutting room floor. Let's get it. Francis Chumacori and uh, 
like this many would think of Led Zeppelin's rendition of their song. All the thunder in the Listen, man. <clears throat> Alternate vocals. And, uh, of 
course, you know, the big question mark is you're listening to this tune is, geez, I wonder if they did this with all of their songs. And did they leave a trail? Is there a trail that we could pick up? Is it in the body of this cutting room floor? So if this is uh, part three and it's uh, uh, almost two hours long, how many parts are there? Are they all this long? Is it uh, covering the whole Led Zeppelin um, catalog, uh, you know, with maybe different instrumentals, ultimate vocals? I'd like to look into that some more. Let me know, uh, Joe. You're just giving me one link here. <laughs> Probably have to go uh, doing a little seek and a little search. But that was cool, man. That was really cool to listen to the song in an alternate version, you know, uh, a little bit extended. It's a couple of minutes. Well, it's almost a minute longer than the um, uh, album version. And uh, yeah, man, hey, even when they're just jamming, just doing their thing, it's still got that masterful signature. They've still got the full complement of all of their great talents uh, to bear, you know, fantastic, man. It's not polished, it's not refined, but it still lets up. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I gotta look into this cutting room floor uh, a little bit more, man. Explore that some more. And definitely, if the, uh, a lot of the tracks are uh, alternate vocals, um, uh, added instrumentation or whatever the case may be it might definitely warrant another string of reactions we'll see um when the levy breaks that was really good man that was really really good now i wish that i had the lyrics in front of me uh sometimes i didn't hear what he was singing but uh i had a feel for where he was going with it and uh that was really really good man i've heard that uh plant uh is notorious for doing that um switching up uh, his vocals often, especially in live performances. So, uh, you know, I guess, you know, when you're just a, a master of your uh, song and in the zone, you can do that. I also heard, uh, who was telling me this story? Was I watching a program? There was something about where um, in the middle of the night they would have an inspiration and they just want to jam, you know, at one, two in the morning. And they would knock on their engineer's door asking him to open up, uh, it was at the mobile studio or whatever. And so after a while, the uh, engineer decided, I'm not going to do this anymore. From now on, I'm not going to sleep on location with them. I'm going to lock up and I'm going to go home so that they don't get these inspirations and wake me up in the middle of the night to do their jamming and recording or whatnot. So that tells you, man, yeah, those guys definitely had passion. And um, they were really uh, following their inspiration. And that's why they're so good. Cutting their own floor. Cutting their own path. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, I got to look into this cutting room floor. So you know what we'll do? Let's, um, let's check out our next track, man. That being Fool in the Rain. <clears throat> and it's an isolated drum track and uh, there's a big note here from Joe. Joe says, excuse my throat, <clears throat> this is heavy and deep. Unfortunately, the track cuts off abruptly. After the middle samba section, however, Bonzo makes his statement still. Trust me, this is worth it, man. I got into drums because of this particular drum track and a whole lot of love isolated drum track, but we'll save that for another day. Whole lot of love, yeah. Very brief, Bonzo and Plant banter at the beginning. Very cool. Okay, let's check it out, Joe. Fool in the rain. I heard an isolated drum track for Fool in the Rain before, and uh, I believe it was, uh, polyphonic. Uh, he was breaking it down and uh, it was the first time that I'd actually heard Fool in the Rain, just the isolated drumming and that was really cool. So let's check this out. It's a little longer. Almost five minutes, man. Here we go. 
fucking hell. One, two, one, two, ah. one, two, one, two, three, four. Guys, remarkable. Just, just doing this. Ends abruptly, he warned. All right. Wow. John Bonham, man. Yeah, he's uh, he's a force, man. He's a phenom. One of those. Uh, wonders wonders of the world he would be what the ninth wonder of the world he uh 
I've mentioned about John Bonham. This is only my personal opinion. Some of you would agree, and I understand. Um, I believe that he is at his best when he's within the context of uh, Led Zeppelin with the rest of uh, the band. Um, by himself, let's say, I don't know that he would win many drum contests, drum rolling and all that, because I know that um, people would be looking for uh, precision and all of these technicalities and things of that sort that um, he might not incorporate. He's probably capable of it, but he might not incorporate it because it's just not his style. He is, um, in my opinion, at his very best within the confines of uh, the band. Now, Bonham might not win a drum roll contest where Neil Peart would probably win a drum rolling contest just because of their different styles and whatnot. That doesn't make Neil Peart better than John Bonham. Uh, John Bonham is not better than Neil Peart. They're just two two different drummers, um, very, very well fitted for their respective bands. Bonham's charm comes through just with this. Uh, he isn't doesn't seem like he's doing much here, but it's the essence of it that's coming through. I often talk about guitarists who have that ability to make their instrument talk, and they're talking to you through their um, uh, guitar playing. Well, Bonham has that effect, man. He can talk to you through his drumming. And the message and the language is thunder. <laughs> Dropping some thunder on your ass. That is the message I'm sending your way. And so, yo, man, this guy uh, was definitely a force. He had a lot of essence, a lot of charm in his playing. There was like, um, uh, you know that song, Magnet and Steel? He is the magnet and we're the steel. So attracted to um, the element of his drumming. There was just something magical about the mix of his drumming. And he uh, seems to stand alone on that premise. Now, you know, I mean, I haven't um, conquered all of classic rock. I haven't explored all of classic rock. I'm sure that there are many other drummers to discover and whatnot, but uh, I can I know enough already a year and a half into it that this is a very, very unique individual, uh, one of which we may never, ever see uh, again, uh, where it comes to being a very, very special, very gifted uh, musician. We may never see the likes of a John Bonham ever again. That's some sad shit. Sad but true, though. Um, yeah, props to the man for being so damn good. So, yeah, I'm not going to do any reading or anything like that. We've already covered Fool in the Rain in uh, a previous reaction. So what we'll do, we'll just check out this fourth track, man. Uh, the Untitled Jam Session. All right. Led Zeppelin. The Untitled Jam Session. Let's get it. A job for dancers to be for no jam. Would that nothing would have been possible? Mojo? Is it called Mojo? I think it's called Mojo.
Excellent gem, man. Another really good example where vocals are not necessary. Very, very good. I'm visualizing that uh, that album, that rock instrumental album, and having a jam like this in the lineup. Hey, man, again, it would definitely have a fan base. It would have a lot of uh, appeal. And I'm putting myself again in that whole test. If I'm uh, uh, over at a friend's place or whatnot, I sit down and this comes on. Yo, man, I'm checking it out. I'm like, wow, that is excellent, man. Who's this? And yeah, they are just a band and no vocals, just an instrumental rock band. I would be like, hey, that is the shit. I got to check it out, man. You know, so I have no doubt that uh, these guys would be very, very uh, well to do if they did a rock instrumental album. You know, this seems to me like it's probably like a warming up kind of jam. You know, let's just... Uh, pick up our instruments we might still be buzzed from the night before or whatever the case is and let's just get moving let's just get some motion and uh, you know that kind of puts them all in a unified sync John Bonham was just going wild on this one man he wasn't waiting for anybody he was just gone excellent yo I enjoyed this this was a really really nice uh, nice quad Joe I appreciate you uh, sending me these you know listening to the isolated tracks listening to the alternate vocals you know uh again it's just credit to a really really fantastic legendary group of musicians uh the likes of which the likes of which uh i don't think that we're ever gonna uh, see again man i just uh, i don't know you know i mean i recently did a back-to-back uh, -back with tool and of course tool has a big fan base and um they are, uh, you know, uh, some people are encouraging me to give Tool the Led Zeppelin treatment on my new platform where it's like, uh, you know, on a weekly basis, uh, one Tool song go through the chronology and all of that sort of thing. Um, I still don't know about that. You know, I'm, I'm open minded, but uh, I need to gather more information because let's face it, uh, Led Zeppelin is definitely um, in a league of their own and uh, whether or not there are other bands worthy of that um, same treatment it's uh, I'm sure there is but uh, I'm not sure that it's Tool I mean I'm doing the comparison between uh, No Quarter that Led Zeppelin did and that Tool did Tool definitely uh, gave it a very very good um, uh, cover. It was a very good, respectable uh, nod to the original. Uh, it's it was not better though. It was not better than the original. I mean, some people would say it was better because it's more modern, more uh, technology based, and all of that sort of thing. But there is something about the Led Zeppelin sound that has uh, an elemental essence to it. There is something about the charm element of the band uh, that I don't think even with our modern era technology and all of that sort of thing it's going to be duplicated ever again you know so in the end what I'm saying is that I might not even give um, uh, any other band the Led Zeppelin treatment you know uh, we'll wait and we'll see but um, if the verdict is still out on that I haven't really uh, uh, come to any conclusions but that's where I hold them. I hold them in a league of their own. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that uh, we'll ever see another um, uh, band like them ever again. Tool is great, but yeah, man, they are definitely not Led Zeppelin, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm just uh, scrolling down here, checking my notes before I bounce, man. Yeah, that was a really cool mental exercise there, Joe. Uh, especially with Heartbreaker, uh, listening to it without the vocals and then listening to this um, jam at the end. Yeah, man, so I got quads coming up. Uh, got quads for uh, Zupiter, Joseph, John, Rhymes with Teeth. Um, all in the next uh, 
within the next week. And um, you guys already know that you can now, with the gold package, you can um, get either uh, a quad reaction or an album reaction, uh, your choice. Because I remember a, a number of people were saying, hey, you know, it would be great to have all the same still have uh, available to us uh, the ability to do a full album reaction. And I understand that, man. You know, there are some notable tracks, some notable albums that you don't want to uh, just dissect and break up. I get that. So hopefully um, the gold package will accommodate those of you who... Um, might want to see a full album reaction once in a while. So just know that that's available now. Uh, that's it, man. That is my reaction to this great, great grouping of tunes. Led Zeppelin is always welcome. Joe, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's a little bit different from the norm, you know. Uh, and again, I know that there are some that might not really find favor in listening to tracks without vocals or whatnot. Hey, you know what? If you're going to have a negative opinion, save it and just move on. Move on to another reaction because there's hundreds of reactions. I've done 500. At least there's got to be one that you like. So if this is not the one, don't leave a negative comment. Keep your comment to yourself and move on. You know, this is a definite, um, it's a different kind of uh, listening and appreciation for the music. Not everybody's going to get it and I understand that. but don't feel that you need to drop a damn comment if you're going to hit us up with anything negative, right? We're enjoying it for what it is, and that's just the way it is. All right? So have yourselves a good one. Take care, and I'll catch you in my next reaction. Peace.